iSpyFraud is a fraud protection tool that allows you to block specific transactions from running through your gateway account. iSpyFraud scrubs transactions before they leave your gateway account, which means your credit card processor or check processor will not see transactions that are blocked by rules you set in the system. There are some tabs at the top with thresholds, user ban, and exceptions, and these three tabs are where you'll set your rules, while waiting for review and history log is where you can see previous transactions that have run through and how iSpy fraud rules impacted those transactions. Let's go to thresholds. The thresholds page is where you can set specific rules for how much or how often you want transactions to be run based on a couple rules. You can set these rules for all your processors or you can select a specific processor and set the rules for just that one. We'll go to all processors and take a look at this first section. Here's where you can add credit card rules for how often transactions are run on specific credit cards. So for example, this first rule, if a single transaction amount exceeds, we'll say $1,000, you can flag that transaction for review or deny the transaction entirely. We'll hit deny transaction, and when I hit update, that adds the rule to the bottom of the page right here, and I can delete it as well. Likewise, you can set up a rule for if a single transaction is less than a certain amount, you can flag it or deny it. The difference between flagging and denying a transaction is important, as flagging will put it into this waiting review tab up here. And if you don't do anything to that transaction before settlement, it will settle like a normal transaction. However, if you select deny transaction, that will display a failed status to the customer, and those transactions will show up as failed in your reports. Going down, we have another couple rules for daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. So you can say if daily attempted or approved, let's say attempted, if daily attempted transaction amount for a credit card exceeds $1,000, we'll deny the transaction. So that means on any particular day, if a single credit card is run through your gateway for more than $1,000 in multiple transactions, we'll start denying after $1,000. A more common rule is if daily attempted transaction count for a credit card exceeds, and you can set how many times you want a single card to run through, we'll say three, I want to deny. So this rule is going to say on any day, if a single credit card attempts more than three transactions, after that third transaction it attempts, whether it's approved or declined, I want that credit card to stop being able to run transactions. I want everyone to return failed after that no matter what. These rules are all the same down here, but it's just based on week, based on month, or yearly. Finally, these two rules under this first section, if a user changes credit cards over a certain number of times for attempted or approved transactions, you can start flagging or denying those transactions. And finally, if the first however many digits of the credit card match over so many attempted transactions, you can start denying then. So if I want to stop someone from submitting a bunch of transactions with the same bank identifier, for example, I could say if the first six digits of a credit card match over five attempted transactions, let's start denying those. So that's if they change cards five times and all five of those have the same six digits at the start of them. Any cards with those same six digits after that will start declining. And at the bottom section, we have rules that look very similar and are set based on dollar amounts or for number of attempts. But instead of being based on the credit card number, it's based on the IP address of who is submitting the transactions. A very common use case for this is for someone who's trying to avoid card spinners from being able to process too many credit cards on their account. An example rule I could set up for that is if daily attempted transaction count for a single IP address exceeds five, I want to deny the transaction. With that rule in place, anytime the same IP address submits more than five transactions in a single day, they will start getting declines after that fifth attempt. This rule can be very helpful if you have a website where all your customers are at different IP addresses and where you would only expect a customer to submit one or two transactions in a certain time period. However, be aware that this will also apply to any transactions run in your virtual terminal. So if you are running transactions from your office or from your store, it's very likely all your transactions have the same IP address and therefore you would be impacted by this as well. So you wanna be aware of that before you set up a rule like this. Back at the top, we have user bans. That's the next section, and this is where you can block specific people from checking out, whether it be by IP address, by credit card number, email, or other. The first section are IP addresses, where you can block a particular IP address, a class of IP numbers, or a range of IPs. We also give you the option to tell us how long to ban. You can leave it blank to block forever, 
or you can set a rule for a couple days, however many you enter here. You have to give it a description and then tell us, do you want to ban that card? Do you want to deny those transactions from any of these IP addresses? Or do you want to flag them for review? So I've added a rule here to block this particular IP address for five days, and I've given it the name testing, and I'm going to ban transactions. So I'll add this rule. And now I can see when I hit view, I can see all of my IP address rules. And I only have the one in there right now. And I also have an expiration date for when this rule will expire. I'm going to delete this rule and it's gone. The next section are specific credit cards I want to block. So we give you the option to enter a credit card, as much or as little, so I could enter a full credit card. Or if I want to enter just the first six digits, I can use an asterisk as a wildcard to say I want to block any number that starts with these digits and anything after that. Likewise, I can block the last four of a card by doing asterisk one, two, three, four, so now any card that ends 1, 2, 3, 4 will be blocked. If you'd like, you can use asterisks at the front and back. So with this rule, it'll block any card that has the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4 anywhere in the number. Again, you can tell us how many days to ban, give it a name, and whether you want to ban or to flag for review. You can also view any cards you've blocked. Next up is geographical information, where we give you a list of all countries, and you can choose which ones you'd like to block. By default, this is based on the country code that is entered in the checkout process. However, you do have the ability to enable verify IP addresses, which will also check the IP address for where the person is checking out for what country they're in. Again, give it a name, how many days you'd like to ban, and if you want to ban or flag for review. You can add and then view any ones that you have set up. US slash non-US IP ban is where you can set up a rule so that if a customer is checking out, and they enter the United States as their billing address, but their IP address where they're actually checking out is not in the US, this will block that transaction. The default is to do nothing at all, but you can say ban or flag for review. So now if I hit ban and update, so now if I'm checking out and I put my billing address as 123 Main Street, Chicago, Illinois, United States, but my IP address says I'm in Spain, the transaction will be blocked due to this rule. We have a checkbox right here for US country as default. So if you are using software that does not allow the customer to enter their country, you can check this box. And in that case, we will assume US as the country for the billing address, unless the customer provides a different one. User information and email address are the last two sections under user ban, and they're similar. User information is where you can ban specific user IDs. And user IDs are gonna be the customer ID which will be relevant for merchants using the customer vault or who have custom software who is sending a customer ID value along. If no customer ID is provided, then user ID will equate to an email address. So you could also enter, enter an email address here, and this would be what the customer enters in their email field. Meanwhile, email address is specifically for the email address provided. So if I want to block test at example.com from processing any transactions, so I can do that just like I would any of the other sections on this page. And again, wildcards are possible. So if I want to block anyone who uses at example.com as their email address, I can get rid of test, put an asterisk in front, and then anything that ends at example.com will be blocked. Finally, we offer a batch ban section here where any of the rules above for IP, credit card, user ID, or email can be done in mass. So as an example, if I wanted to block a certain number of credit cards, I could enter them here and I can give it a number of days and a description and add. So now I would see those under my credit card section. The last section of rules you can set up are exceptions. Exceptions are whitelisted items so that if any transaction comes through with anything entered on this page, it will ignore all iSpy fraud rules and process like normal. All of the same things you saw on the previous screen are here with IP addresses, credit cards, users, emails, and a batch option. A common use case for this would be a merchant who has a store where they're actually running transactions themselves, and they have a website where their customers will go and enter transactions from their side. You may want to have some rules in iSpy Fraud for customers who are checking out your website, but you don't want them to impact your in-person transactions. To do that, you could find out what the IP address is for your store, enter that here, and add it to the list. Then, any transaction done from this IP address will ignore all rules set under thresholds and user ban. 
The same holds true for all other options on this page. Waiting review doesn't have a lot to show up front. However, this is where you will eventually see a list of all transactions that have been flagged for review based on the rules you have set. If you don't do anything to these transactions, they will process like normal and settle out. So you want to make sure that if you do want to look at your waiting for review transactions before they settle, that you have a routine to go check this page on a regular basis. The final section is history log. And this is where you can see transactions that have gone through your account, both that have processed successfully, as well as those that have been blocked by iSpy fraud. You can see there's only one transaction through this account right now. And we show a transaction ID, the credit card number, the amount, the IP address, and a few other details. And you can see it's highlighted in red. We have a key up here, so accepted means that the transaction was processed and did not flag any iSpy fraud rules. Review is anything that was flagged for review. Denied was blocked by iSpy fraud. An exception is for any transaction that was impacted by one of the whitelists you have set up. So I can see this transaction was declined, but I want to know why. I can hit this little magnifying glass here, and you get a pop-up that says it was banned for that credit card. So the specific card number that was used has been banned by one of my rules. Perfect. So that's great. I know that credit card has been banned already by us by fraud. However, I want to make sure that IP address is never able to be used again. I'm going to hit ban there. That auto fills it on this page, and I can add it to my list of banned IPs. As you can see, iSpyFraud is a very powerful tool for allowing you to block transactions from ever leaving your gateway.